Vivek Jain. I don't have a smartphone. Um, hi, I'm Vivek Jain. This is the sixth week of Occupy Richmond, and I find it necessary to share some historical perspective. We're not starting from scratch. There are obvious parallels with the civil rights movement, but also with other social, economic, cultural, and environmental movements. As corporations have aggrandized power and influence, we've seen a diminishment of the ordinary, unincorporated human beings. We have seen alienation and estrangement. Paul Tillich reminds us that separation is sin. We have witnessed a degradation of common goods and the divestment of social capital. Occupy has been narrowly framed in the media, primarily as a materialistic movement. Has there been any acknowledgement that distribution of wealth has been the rule for decades, with wealth going upwards? We've been misrepresented, dismissed, and ridiculed. Such scorn only reflects the confusion and miseducation of our journalist class, their conflicts of interest, and as many of them have abdicated their responsibility to hold power accountable and become courtiers to power. News is the information that the public needs to keep its freedom. Real news is what people in power want to keep hidden. Class, thanks to Occupy, has re-entered our public discourse. That we should have to relearn what class or human rights are or defend the essential importance of free speech to democracy to me signifies how far we've strayed from the Declaration of Independence, which asserts the equality of people and the universality of human rights, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And most audaciously of all, that government exists only to secure these rights. It's the duty and right of the people that they are obligated to remake government and community to fulfill its original purpose. My fellow occupiers are curious empathic, active listeners, critical thinkers, selfless and peaceful, and they're fully committed to nonviolence and development of community, to upholding that original purpose. We refuse to be passive spectators of history. We can't and won't depend on courts, administrators, or governments to protect our freedoms. Social inequities are neither inevitable nor accidental, but reflect the assumptions, beliefs, and decisions of certain people who command enormous power. Of people who command enormous power. Our politicians ignore public opinion and human needs and jeopardize our collective futures. This myopia speeds us all toward the cliff. They misuse the police and waste $30,000 of taxpayer money to bulldoze a nonviolent camp addressing human needs. They know it is the organized, determined public that commands power. You have force, we have power. Or else how to explain these tactics against those who make the suffering of human beings a burning issue. Mayor Jones shared the goals of his, of, of his administration, you which includes improving... Please begin to summarize. Thank you. Mayor Jones shared the goals of his, his administration, which includes improving educational and employment opportunities, transportation, community, reducing crime, and improving poverty. These are interrelated social problems. Occupy knows that change won't come from the top or from blue ribbon commissions. Occupy is the only game in town that can make us a tier one city. What Mr. Jones wants. The, the best way to preserve our fragile freedoms and free speech is by exercising them, whether city council passes the ordinance or not. We know well the truth in Dr. King's recognition that power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice, and that Thank justice you. at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, no applause. You have been very, very, you have been very respectful of our rules. We've been very respectful of you, so please, no applause. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, those are all of tonight's speakers. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's go to uh, paper in a second.